Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Master the NEC, where we talk about the National Electrical Code and all things electrically related. My name is Paul Abernathy, your host as always, and welcome to the video. So I did a video that explained a simple example of adjustment and corrections, and I started with a conductor's ampacity, and I showed how it applied adjustment and corrections in order to determine what the overall ampacity was of the conductor after adjustment and corrections. And so I wanted to do a video that explains, well, what if the question in an exam gives me the actual ampacity that I'm working with? Maybe it's a load, it's in whatever the load is. And now I need to find what size conductor I need to handle this load. So we wanted to do an example of this. And this will be part of an ongoing series where we do other examples of this, maybe one with continuous loads and all, to help you better understand how this all works. So let's get started. So let's look at this question. The first thing the question says is we have four circuits. I'm going to assume here that we're talking four two-wire circuits because it says a total of eight current carrying conductors. So four circuits, two, circ two conductors each, one ungrounded and one grounded conductor. Uh, it says, and they're located in EMT, which is a tubing. It's not a conduit. All right. It says we have four circuits in EMT with eight total current carrying conductors being installed in an ambient temperature location of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Interesting. Now it says... The non-continuous load on each circuit is 19 amperes. So it's non-continuous load. 19 amps is the actual load on each one of these circuits here. And there's four of them. It says, what's minimum size THHN, THWN-2 conductor do I need for each circuit? Four circuits. Now, always assume copper unless it states otherwise. It should tell you that beginning of all your exams. But again, always assume copper if it doesn't state otherwise. If it tells you it wants aluminum, it'll tell you that. But we're going to always assume copper, okay? Now, there's some steps you got to go through in order to solve this. Now, in the previous example, which I'll show you, the one we did before, we already started out with 12 gauge, and we simply would go to the table 31015B16 and start with the 30 under the 90 degree because we're allowed to do adjustment and corrections from the 90. And we used multiplication to work our way down. Well, this is a little different because we're going to use division because we're given the actual load and now we're going to work our way up and apply these adjustment and corrections and determine what conductor we need to find in the 90 degree column to start with and then we can check our math with multiplication. All right, don't worry, I'll show you how this works. All right, so the first thing when I look at this a question on the exam, um, I'm looking at eight total current carrying conductors. All right, so step one, I got to find the adjustment factor for eight current carrying conductors. Now, where do I do that in the National Electrical Code? Well, let's go to the code. So here in the 2017 edition, it is table 31015B3A, and I will highlight that. So this is the adjustment factor, and that's where we get the term adjustment. Many people use the term derating. It's fine, but really we're talking adjustment factor. And this is for when you have more than three current carrying conductors. Now, what's interesting about that is that if you look at the ampacity table that we usually go to for ampacity, you'll notice that the ampacities that are in this table are based on not more than three current carrying conductors. So anytime I have more than three, I'm going to have to have some type of adjustment take place. Okay, so that's the first thing we're looking at. So let's go back. So we know that we have eight current carrying conductors. So you come down here, you see seven to nine. All right, seven to nine, we'll highlight that. And then that is a 70% okay, value that we're going to adjust for. Okay, So you want to convert this to a decimal. You simply start at the right and move two decimals to the left. So it's going to be 0 0.70. And that's what's going to be on your, your right down. So here we've got the 70% that we got from that table, which again, as you see here, is 31015B3A. That's the 2017 code. In the 2020 code, that's going to be table 31015C1. So just kind of giving you a heads up that that is changing. And trust me, it's a much better flow in the 2020 code than it is where you jump around in the 17 code. So don't stress it. It still works the same way. All right, the next step we would have to do is, okay, now we know that it's 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So maybe this EMT runs through an area where the ambient temperature rises above 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what table 31015B16 is based on. So we know that now we're going to have to make some kind of correction, a temperature correction. So what do we do? Well, we know that it's 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Another thing that we know is we're using THHN, THWN-2. 
Now the 2Hs means it's 90 degree rated insulation with a nylon covering that's installed uh, with thermoplastic and in a dry location it's good for 90 amperes. That's what the 2Hs mean. But it's also dual rated. So here it's also a THWN-2. Now if it didn't have the dash 2 then it would be only 1H and that would be the 75 degree column that you'd have to work out of which is going to severely limit you to the ampacity of that conductor when you're doing adjustment and correction. So we have a dash 2 here. This dash 2 means that I can use the 90 degree ampacity values for adjustment and corrections. Okay, So whether it's wet or a dry location. So that's real important. So make sure you pay attention to your exam question because if this dash 2 wasn't on here and it's a wet location and it states it in the question, then you'd have to start your adjustment and corrections from the 75 degree. That dash 2 is what allows you to be able to jump into the 90. Okay, So what it's asking for is what size, what is the minimum size of these THHN, THWN-2 conductors. And so we know that we're at least in the 90 degree C. So correction factors, we're going to go to 31015B2A right here. And again, we're basing on the general 30 degree C, 86 degree Fahrenheit, because that's the table of ampacity that we're drawing from in this equation. So here we are, and I'll go on and highlight that. So we know our insulation is rated for 90 degrees. Okay, so this is the column we're going to be in. Again, if we were working with 75 degree rated insulation, let's say it was just THWN with no dash 2 on it, then we would be working out of the 75 degree column. This is purely based on the insulation value rating here. Okay, So now we know that it was 104 degrees Fahrenheit in our location. So down here we find 104 degrees right there. And we cross reference these two. So we come down, come over, and what do we have? We have 0.91 right there. So we're highlight that. So that's the equation we want here. So over here, it's 0.91. Of course, that equates to 91%, but this one's already been converted to a decimal. Uh, we have to do this one manually when we're looking at the adjustment factors for current current conductors, okay? Because that just gives you percentage. Uh, and again, that's 31015B2A gives you that percentage. Uh, under the 2020 code, that's going to be table 31015B1. So it's just going to kind of flow in succession. All right, so let's do the math. We knew that it was 19 amperes of non-continuous load. So I have to have a conductor that can handle 19 amperes, uh, and it's not continuous. That means it's not going to be more than 2 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds. Okay, so it's just a, a non-continuous load, and the question gave us that value. So here's where we're going to use division. Whereas in the previous example, we used multiplication because it told us what conductor we start from. And then all we had to do is go find the ampacity of that conductor and work with the multiplication, work down. Here we're working up because we need to find a conductor under the 90 degree column that is going to satisfy this 19 amps after you apply the adjustment and corrections that we just looked up. So start with the 19 amps. That's what you've got here. Divide it. Let's bring up the calculator. Let's do it right here. So let's do the 19, and we're going to divide that by 0 0.70. That's what our adjustment factor was. And we're going to divide that by 0.91, and that gives me 29.82 amperes. So I have to find a conductor under the 90 degree column, because remember, I can use a 90 degree for adjustment and corrections. I have to have a conductor that can handle at least it's at least 29.82 amperes. Okay, so let's go to the code and let's go to 31015B16. Okay. Now, this is your ampacity table. Uh, obviously, these perfect world conditions, not more than three current current conductors, don't apply here. And it's above 86 because our example, that's why we used 31015B2A and 31015B3A. That's why we had to use those because it had to make some kind of correction and adjustment to these values. Okay. Because these conditions weren't perfect. So down here, I need a conductor under the 90 degree. Why? Because it is THHN and it is THWN-2. I need a conductor that can handle the 29.82 amps. And there you go. There's a 30. Now, what is that? That is a 12 gauge right there. Now, you notice these two asterisks right here. If you go to the bottom, you'll notice this. It says, you know what? You got to remember that there are what's called conductor overcurrent protection limitations that are here. Okay, and you got to be aware of these. So what that means is if you look at 240.4D, it says that a 12 gauge has to be protected by a 20 amp overcurrent device. A 14 gauge has to be protected by a 15 amp overcurrent device. Well, we only had, it might be 30 for adjustment and corrections. Okay, and we're all good with that. We know that it's only 19 amperes is in our equation. That's all, and it's a non-continuous load, and that's what we're working with. So 
Once I selected that 30 amps, now we need to check and make sure, just to check our work, Now we should know that this is going to be fine, but we need to check our work to make sure that it's still going to have a conductor after adjustment and corrections that can handle 90 amps. So I always teach students to now use division to move up to find your conductor, and you use multiplication to verify your work. So here's what we did, same equation, same math. We chose that 12. Now we looked and we saw that a 12 is good for 30 amps and they're 90 degree. Then we applied 30 amps, and we'll bring the calculator up and do that one as well. So this one was 30 amps, and we're going to multiply now times 0 0.70 times 0.91. Those were the same values we had before, and that's 19.11 amps. So I have a conductor that is good for 19.11 amps. Can a conductor that's good for 19.11 amps handle 19 amps of non-continuous load? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now. I'm still going to take that 12 and I'm going to protect it with a 20 amp overcurrent protected device in accordance with 240.4D. That's the rules for small conductor rules. Uh, and we're going to apply that here. We're not talking about motors. We're not talking about HVAC systems here where you have some allowances under 240.4G. We're simply talking the basics here. I'm going to protect that conductor. Now, since it says to put it on a 20 amp device and it's 12 gauge, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and be honest with you, that conductor can handle 20 amperes on a 20 amp rated device uh, and not be a problem if it's not a continuous load. Okay, Not an issue. It can easily handle 20 amperes under a non-continuous application. We're only putting 19 amperes on a conductor that can actually hold 19.1 amperes, so we're good. And I can terminate it into a 20 amp overcurrent device in accordance with the small conductor rules. So 12 gauge is the choice. 90 degrees C insulation is what its rating is, and you see that it's a THHN. If it was a wet location, it would THWN-2. Uh, again, just to remind you, the ampacity table we've been working with is 31015B16. In the 2020 code, that changes to table 31016. So just a little bit of changes with the 2020 code, but nothing overly complicated. I hope you got something out of this. I encourage you to share our videos with other people. Uh, we appreciate all of the emails and calls and texts that we get, people appreciation, appreciating what we do for you and helping you pass exams. We appreciate those that buy our courses. We thank you. This is why we do the free stuff to give back to the people that participate and, and really help us out, and we appreciate it. Again, if you have any questions, email us at info, I-N-F-O, at masterthenec.com or info at electricalcodeacademy.com and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. If you have suggestions for future videos, let us know. I'd be more than happy to try to work those in. Until next time, folks, stay safe. God bless.